Right, now, my father before me was a magician. Um, he's, he's no longer with us. Actually, I was his first trick and a dirty trick at that. <laughs> the that. But he's no longer with us. And he passed the hat on to my eldest brother. That's the one who's born with a broken arm. That was from trying to hang on till after the wedding. And he made it, too, and we were very happy about that. And um, the biggest influence in my magic life was father's great friend, the great candelabra. Knew him well, always used to say to him, great, you do some wonderful magic. And they called him the great candelabra because he was very well, hung, very well lit up more often. <laughs> used to drink like you wouldn't believe. It was frightening. His wife never knew he drank. Well, one night he came home sober. Anyhow, <laughs> he, this is what happened. He would walk out in front of the audience, which was a mistake. We used to say to him, great, you should do the act in the dressing room. It would mean more. But no, he would walk out in front of the audience, fool that he was. <laughs> then he would reach in his top out. I'm getting hooked up on this microphone wire. Doesn't matter, don't worry. Reach in his top out, and he'd put out a silk handkerchief like that. And then he would wave it up and down. You can use any color, provided, of course, it's white. And then he would wave it up and down like that, which caused a lot of talk. <laughs> but he wasn't one of those. He only helped them out if they were busy. <laughs> and that was the reason why I left the United Kingdom, because they made it legal. And I thought, get the hell out before they make it compulsory. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, he would walk out and he would take the handkerchief and he would shove it into his fist. Now, the audience frequently had other ideas where he should shove it, but he wasn't stupid. <laughs> he would shove it into his fist like that. And then, as sure as I'm writing this three-wheeled camel, when it came out the other side, it started to change color, something like that. I was very impressed. Obviously, I was alone. <laughs> Don't feel bad, because at this point, he got no applause either, so it doesn't matter. So it's in and out and in and out and in. I thought to myself, my God, it sounds like a biology lesson. But anyhow, <laughs> however, in and out and in. And when he pushed all deep down inside his fist, pushed it well down like that, he pulled out the other side like that. It had totally changed color. Uh, it had totally changed color. <laughs> Bless you. I was just thinking what a nice, quiet place to come and rehearse. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I thought I'd go around to his dressing room and try to find out how it's done. Dressing room number four. Sorry, five, five, five. Four was different. Four was occupied by the trapeze artist who called his wife from the act. That was different. <laughs> and um, seven. Seven was occupied by the world's worst knife thrower, Rudolfo II and his lovely wife, Zelda the 27th. <laughs> Fabulous, but anyhow. So when I got around there, I said, how do you do this thing where you take the filthy rag and you pull it through your fist like that and it changes color? He said, it's so simple. There are actually two filthy rags, the red one and the other one. I said, I don't remember another one. He said, oh, yes, there was another one. He said, the other one was this one, the, the white one. He said, ah, now we know where we are. I said, now explain to me exactly how you do it because someday I may be so reduced, I may want to do this, cra this stuff. <laughs> so he said, this is what you do. Before the epic, place that inside your inside pocket like that. Then backstage, backstage, you should see it. It's, it's a hook on the stairs. <laughs> uh, he says, take the red one and push that inside your fist like that, making a tight parcel, which is what you find falling out of the average nightclub like this at about one o'clock in the morning. When you've got it deep down inside your fist like that, he said, hold your hand in a natural fashion while you go for the white handkerchief. Natural fashion. <laughs> Nobody knows that there's a hanky there. Few will say, hey, the old critter's rheumatism is acting up again. <laughs> but nobody will know that there's a handkerchief there. Then, uh, and you never open that hand. And you reach for the handkerchief, you see. Never open that hand. Of course, I could if I wanted to. I mean, I could do that, but I don't do it. That, uh. <laughs> then he said, oh. Oh, bless you. you they, they are following this stuff, thank <laughs> God. Yeah. Right, then he said, pull out the white one. I said, as you pull out the white one, try at the same time not to pull out your underwear, because that would be very unseemly. <laughs> now, he said, you push this into your fist, and as that goes into the fist, that will force out the red one, which is the one we have been talking about. He said, one other thing, don't let the audience... <laughs> oh, bless you, I agree with you, but who are we among <laughs> so many, you know? He said, don't let the... There's a man over there in a television set doing my act. <laughs> oh, monitor, sorry. He said, don't let the audience see the white at the same time as the red. Otherwise, they will nudge each other and they say, hey, this gray-haired old, this old gentleman is doing something clever. Make sure that's pushed well out of the way like that and watch for a hangnail. 
I said, what's a hangnail? He said, a hangnail is very, you do like that with a hangnail like that, and you pull the whole thing out like that. And then, to use an old Arabic expression, you are in stuck. <laughs> Got that from an uncle of mine. Charming man, charming man. This ring is the very ring that on his deathbed he sold to me. <laughs> I'm not stupid, I gave him a check. <laughs> right, now. I said, explain to me about this. He said, well, I saw a man do this once and he got a standing ovation, but regrettably it was a midget convention, so we never knew about it. <laughs> I said, I did a trick once and I got a kneeling ovation. It was a special show for Billy Graham supporters. He said, look, <laughs> tell me about this, look. He said, the man was a genius. He was a real magician. I said, if he was a real magician, that hanky would be half died. He said, I know. And it looked something like that. Thank you. Good. Oh, yes. Thank God for a discerning audience after all these years working at magic conventions. Now, I will fold this very carefully because I have another show coming up next December. <laughs> and among the rest of the junk. For this next 